Hey and welcome to a new video. Today we talk about the latest Maya 2022 default ACES workflow. But before we start, here a little recommendation. So check out this really really cool Discord server from Arvid Schneider. So it's a really helpful community and yeah it's growing every day a bit bigger so we are now over 5k people. So feel free to join, I will put the link in the description and now let's jump into Maya. As some of you know, the latest Maya version comes with default ACES. That's kind of cool because ACES is cool as well, but if you don't know ACES it can be a bit overwhelming in the first. So that's why I'm doing here this video. So here in the scene I have a standard Arnold dome light and a asset from the Quixel bridge. So I imported it manually because on this date there are there is not an update for the Quixel bridge for the Maya 2022 version, sadly, so I hope they will do it soon. But when you import it, it's all default. So we are going through each of the steps now together. Okay, so as you can see it here in the render view, it's really saturated and that can be cool, but it's wrong. So let's jump into the hypershade to have a look what's going on. Let's first start with the light. When you import an HDR light, Maya will put it per default on the color space to raw, which is wrong because we are dealing here with color data. The right so-called IDT is here scene linear rec 709 minus sRGB. So that means if it's a rec 709 file or sRGB file and it's in a linear file format, which is HDR, you have to choose this IDT to meet that Arnold knows how to deal with it. If you are working with the OC OCIO file, uh, config file, it will look like this. So the utility linear sRGB IDT because it's a 32-bit file format XR or HDR file. But here now it's seen linear rec 709 because I'm using here the default config file from Maya. As soon as we did that, we can hop over to the material. Here I have just the basic standard material which ships with the Quixel bridge asset and let's go through each of them. So here we have the albedo and here it also puts it to raw which is wrong because it's an EXR file and as we know EXR is a linear file format we have to change this as well to scene linear rec 709 slash srgb because it's done with some srgb primaries. Let's switch it over to this. Here the specular is also something which deals with coloring. So let's switch this one as well to our scene linear. The roughness is just a support map. So here raw is just fine. We don't want to apply a color correction on it. Normal map as well. And on the display displacement map same here, it just supports the shader with some data. So if you render it with default, no changes, it will look like this. And now let's render it with the correct IDTs. Let's give it a second to create the TX files. And come on. And boom, look at this. Now it's no longer that oversaturated image. So we can move around and let's have a look. Now it looks way more realistic. If you want more saturation, you can do that in the post-production, but here you have to do it first correct and right that you later in the pipeline don't have any problems. So if you are dealing with some 8-bit files, you have to choose different IDTs. That one is just for the EXR files. If you have a PNG as example or a JPEG, you need to switch it to, where is it? Because I'm working all the time with VXR, I don't use the order too much. Um, here, to sRGB. If you're working with a texture which is already 
convert it to ACES, you have to switch it to ACES CG. And here are all the other IDTs, but I don't think you have to deal a lot with this because it's some, some camera footage IDTs which transfer it to ACES and a lot of other things. But you have to have a look on the RAW and the sRGB one and the scene linear Rec 709 sRGB one. So yeah, that's it for the tutorial. It was a short one and yeah, again, join our cool Discord here and I wish you a nice day. Bye bye.